both of these players' side. Wolf will go ahead and lead both restricted Pokemon, the Kyogre and the Rayquaza on his side, while Jonathan will go ahead and lead his own Kyogre and the Gengar here. Uh, so Gengar Kyogre lead, not something that we see very often alongside the Rayquaza Kyogre lead, which is definitely something I don't think I've ever seen both of those Pokemon out as a lead. Yeah, it's a you know, pretty unique lead in the sense that normally you lead with Kyogre and then you keep Rayquaza in the back to allow you for the potential switch-ins here. With Rayquaza out, you know, the water type attacks will do less damage because Airlock is activated. However, it also means that if Jonathan wants to switch out into Groudon, it could just potentially be knocked out by a water type attack from Wolf's side. So you've got to be worried a little bit about that. Given that we see the Gengar here, it's most likely Lemonectric isn't going to make an appearance, unfortunately. And here, Gengar, of course, does threaten Rayquaza immensely with a Will-O-Wisp. We've seen that this is a physical Rayquaza that relies kind of on Dragon Ascent and Sword Stance. Also has that nifty Focus Sash item. So by being able to burn it, not only do you get rid of the Focus Sash, essentially, you also make sure that its damage output is significantly decreased. But Wolf has a lot more offense going on his side right now. Mm -hmm. Even if Rayquaza gets burned, he can still get a lot of damage off. Yeah, so Rayquaza may be able to get the damage off after the burn. Uh, Jonathan, with that Kyogre and Gengar, putting a little bit of offensive pressure, but definitely nowhere near as much as the double restricted on Wolf's side. Yeah, you got to remember that Gengar here could just, you know, be hit by a huge water spot or origin pulse, but Rayquaza here actually going to swap out. Yeah, so Wolf doing what Wolf does best and switching his Pokemon around. Rayquaza swapped out for Raichu. Jonathan going to go ahead and Mega Evolve Gengar, so keeping both of his Pokemon in this first turn. Mega Gengar now trapping the uh, the Raichu and Kyogre, oh. going for the Sludge Bomb onto Kyogre, actually. So doing a good amount of damage back to it, weakening this Water Spout a little bit. Not going to deal enough to Kyogre. Sur Gengar actually will survive because of that. And Thunder oh. from Kyogre, but the Raichu switch in. Raichu will take that Thunder for Wolf and actually boost its special attack. Yeah, I do want to say that's already a pretty risky play from Jonathan. You know, Rayquaza has that airlock ability, and so with airlock up, the yeah. rain is technically negated and Thunder is no longer 100% accurate. So maybe Jonathan trying to gamble a little bit going for that play, but Wolfie says, nope, I'm not going to let you get that Thunder. I'm going to bring in Raichu. Gengar is able to survive, and, you know, I like that play from Jonathan in the sense that he knows that Kyogre is by far the most important Pokemon yeah. on Wolf's team. If you can knock that out, you know, you're in a really good position to win the game right from the start. So he gambled a little bit, didn't go in his favor, but you can respect that play for sure. Yeah, and Gengar surviving after uh, dealing a little bit of damage to Kyogre, weakening that water spout, will allow Gengar to get off another attack this turn if it wants to, uh, or even just switch back out and switch back in for a uh, Will-O-Wisp uh, threat later on on Rayquaza. You gotta remember, you could switch in Groudon here. You know, Kyogre could go into Groudon. Gengar does have the trap up, and that's actually really, really helpful. We do see Groudon come in here. Yeah, it is going to be the Groudon trap, so Groudon will switch in for Kyogre, will set up the Desolate Land and block any Water-type attacks. Gengar now alongside Groudon may go for an attack here, may try to protect itself to make ensure that Wolf's Pokemon are both trapped here uh, with the Groudon for at least one turn here. Uh, although Raichu can always Volt Switch out, so Gengar will go for the Protect. Uh, so no damage being taken by Gengar right now. Raichu goes for the Fake Out, will connect with the Groudon, but uh, just dealing a little bit of chip damage there, not much else. Kyogre's oh. Ice Beam into the Protect. So at least for one turn, Raichu and Kyogre are trapped in here with Groudon. And that's a big deal, right? I think that Jonathan, this might be a strategy like he's going to want to use in the series of the set because this is the best time possible. Uh, actually, you do have to worry, however, that Raichu could maybe Volt Switch Gengar and then the Rayquaza could come in. So I guess the Volt Switch option kind of negates the fact that the trap is so imminent here. But what if Manectric's in the back? <laughs> <laughs> well, that would actually... Regular Manectric. Right, and so... <laughs> Even though, as uh, crazy as that sounds, it actually does have a lot of use here. You know, mm -hmm. if you are able to bring in that Manectric, for example, swap Gengar into Manectric, Groudon gets a Precipice Blades off, or, you know, just a really strong attack off in general, pick up the Knockout onto Raichu, do a lot of damage onto Kyogre, and the Sun is still up. So, Manectric, regular Manectric would actually be so great to see here. It's swapping out. Here's Gengar going out. Gengar is going to switch out, and it will oh! be Bronzong. No Manectric here. So, Bronzong will be the switch for Jonathan. Uh, wants to protect the uh, Gengar, actually going to switch both. Pokemon out, so the sunlight will fade and Kyogre will come out for Jonathan in place of Groudon. So having put himself in that position, just wants to switch all of his Pokemon back out, giving Wolf a free turn here. Wolf opts to use Protect on Kyogre for that free turn, uh, while Raichu is going to use Endeavor and will connect with the Kyogre on the switch in, but not dealing that much damage because Raichu uh, still at full health, did not take a Precipice Blades as it may have expected. Yeah, so I think if I'm Jonathan, I'm not 
you know, I'm okay about that. Yeah. Kyogre doesn't take too much damage. I'm still in an okay position. Raichu does have an increased stage of special attack, of course, mm -hmm. but we've seen that this Raichu doesn't rely as much on offense and more relies on kind of fake out. Just tanking the damage and then endeavoring down uh, something big like a Kyogre. Exactly. So Bronzeling here is an interesting pick, and ultimately, you know, we didn't see electric type attack uh, come. We didn't see that Volt mm -hmm. Switch, and Bronzong here instead of the Nectric makes sense here. We gotta wonder what exactly this Bronzeling can do, because it doesn't have any offense versus Kyogre, and mm -hmm. uh, Kyogre Ogre can just, you know, use its strong water type attacks against it. So uh, I think if I'm Wolf, I'm still pretty pleased about my position right now. Yeah, you have to wonder if Jonathan will be able to make use of potentially a trick room on that Bronzong. Raichu does Volt Switch this time, deals actually a lot of damage. It did get that boost from the, the Thunder earlier. Right. So dealing more damage than, you, than Jonathan may have expected. Raichu going to switch out. Wolf has two Pokemon he could pick instead of this Raichu to take whatever Jonathan's Kyogre will be dishing out. It will be the Hitmontop in the back, so uh, Wolf very much favoring the Hitmontop and the Raichu able to cycle, intimidate, and fake out. K Water Spout does come out from Wolf's Kyogre first, so Wolf's Kyogre is faster. Not able to pick up the KO onto Bronzong, though. Bronzong hangs on Origin with Pulse. 8 HP. Origin Pulse connects, so it will hit Wolf's Pokemon. Is it going to be enough to pick up a KO on Hitmontop? Not enough. Hitmontop hangs on with red health and bounces back with the eject button while Kyogre taking a little bit of extra damage as well. So Wolf getting another chance to switch in a new Pokemon. Uh, usually we see this be the Raichu, so he can keep cycling those fake outs. Uh, but, you know, in this, uh, in potentially Trick Room coming up, maybe you want to bring in that Rayquaza for priority. Yeah, this has actually been a really, really close game. I mm. felt like, you know, oh, maybe Wolf can take it away here. But, you know, we've seen some clutch survivals, both Gengar and Bronzong just surviving with very, very, very little, little HP. Health. And you gotta imagine, Gengar here can actually play a huge role in terms of finishing off Pokemon and knocking things mm -hmm. out. There is priority from Wolf's team, but it's faint from him on top and extreme, extreme speed, speed from Gengar. Right, so neither of those, uh, extreme speed from Rayquaza, excuse me. So neither of those can actually hit the Gengar because, of course, Gengar is Ghost type. We do see Ooh. Trick Room go up. Trick Room is set up, and Rayquaza is the switch in for Wolf. So Bronzong twisting the dimensions. Now Jonathan's Kyogre will be the fastest uh, primal or restricted Pokemon on the field. Yep. Uh, Bronzong at 8 HP. Pretty bulky, but still probably not likely to survive in extreme speed here. Right, and you know, if you're Wolf here, you gotta ask, do I go for the extreme speed onto Bronzong? Because if I do, then the Kyogre on Jonathan's end is just free to get an Ice Beam off. Mm -hmm. And can my Kyogre even knock out uh, the Kyogre on Jonathan's end? Right now, Rayquaza's airlock is up, and that means that, you know, here Rayquaza is either going to negate the rain through its airlock, or if it Mega Evolves, also gonna negate the ring. So, mm -hmm. water type attack damage is decreased, and if I'm Jonathan, I'm probably feeling uh, pretty good about my position. You know, Wolf's still definitely in a solid position as well, but uh, I think, you know, he was able to really make some good plays so far to at least give himself an advantage. All right, well, Wolf will retreat his Kyogre, so Kyogre's not going to deal any damage here. Raichu will be the play. Uh, so Raichu back on the field, Rayquaza with a Protect here. Uh, so just trying to get some switches around, get the Fake Out to stall out this uh, Trick Room. Kyogre does go for Thunder again, so Raichu will pick that up once more. Another special attack boost on the switch into Thunder. Yeah, and once Getting again, a lot of use out of that lightning rod. Yeah, you can see why Wolf is considered one of the best players in the world for, and why you know he's had that title for so long. He never takes any risks there. He says, you know what, I'm not going to allow you to get a potential Thunder off because I know that's what's going to knock out my Kyogre. Of course, Thunder is still a little bit shaky of an accuracy, but you can once again respect the play from Jonathan. You know, he, and Jonathan knows, okay, if somehow I can punish it, and if somehow, you know, for some reason, Wolf just stays in and I can connect with that Thunder, then I eliminate the biggest threat, and once again, Again, you know, there is that Groudon in the back. Groudon would really like to see Kyogre knocked out. Yeah, and Jonathan's Pokemon are slowly starting to get whittled down. And as we see the battle timer, I mean, uh, I always like to check around this part of the game whenever I'm uh, casting one of Wolf's matches just to see how close we are to the end of time. All players still have all Pokemon right now, but that could change. And if that does, a uh, timer could become a very real win condition. Groudon will switch in for the Bronzong, wants to keep that healthy. Jonathan will protect his own Kyogre here, trying to keep that Pokemon healthy as well. Raichu goes for the Fake Out into the Protect, and Swords Dance comes out from Rayquaza there. Wolf uh, deciding to turn on the offense right now. 
Yeah, I like the Sword Sands play a lot here because Rayquaza still is at full HP mm -hmm. and maybe it could potentially even, Focus you know, dash. right, it could potentially uh, extreme speed knock out Kyogre. Now, we're not sure about this Kyogre's spread and how it's really trained, but a nice play there by Wolf there. He knew that, okay, I'm in an okay position right now. I'm going to be able to reduce any damage from Kyogre. Now, Jonathan could have actually capitalized there if he went for a Gyro Ball onto Rayquaza, mm -hmm. but most likely trying to slay a little conservative, hoping that Wolf would just launch an attack off. That Sword Stance does mean, though, however, now that the Rayquaza is a much, much bigger threat. Mm -hmm. We only have five minutes left. Both trainers still have all their Pokemon, but of course, their HPs are running low. So Jonathan really has to be able to take advantage of the last couple of turns of Trick Room here. And of course, Kyogre and Groudon still should be able to outspeed that Rayquaza under Trick Room. Mm -hmm. Although, of course, there is the Extreme Speed, so no protects. Extreme Speed will connect with Kyogre. Does it survive? Is enough no! Kyogre will go down. Rayquaza picks up the KO onto that Kyogre with the Extreme Speed. Precipice Blades from Groudon will connect with Raichu. Wolf seemed to think it would not be enough for the KO before, but it is enough for a one-hit KO. Jonathan picks up the KO, so both po players trading KOs on their other Pokemon. Rayquaza, though, still has its Focus Dash, still, still has the Swords Dance boost, and that was a Raichu for a Kyogre trade. This is such a difficult game. We only have four minutes left, and honestly, I would use every second I could right now just because of the fact that it's so difficult. You have to make every play correctly here because this game is all about, you know, how well do you conserve your Primal Groudon and your Primal Kyogre? And, you know, if you lose that one key Pokemon, then the matchup instantly just turns so much into the other player, player's favor. So that was an interesting turn there. I thought Jonathan maybe would have wanted to kind of commit with an Ice Beam and an Eruption or, uh, you know, basically doubling up onto that slot, but instead he actually makes a better play there, Eruption onto that Raichu, most likely to be able to survive and then get an Endeavor off. So this Groudon is still looking really healthy, but you gotta ask how hard exactly can it hit that Rayquaza? Yeah, and the Groudon may be healthy, but uh, Jonathan's other Pokemon definitely are not. Uh, Wolf will bring in the Hitmontop, which is also not very healthy right now, uh, but will get the Intimidate crucially off onto that Groudon. And Hitmontop just barely surviving earlier in the game, being able to eject out and coming back in for another Intimidate on Groudon could be what saves Wolf in this game. There are so many mind games here right now because, of course, we mentioned earlier, Hitmontop and Rayquaza cannot hit the Gengar with this priority type attacks. Of course, though, Trick Room still is up, and that means that Gengar is going to be the slowest Pokemon. We see a switch out here, though. Yeah, Gengar actually going to switch out, so Bronzong will come out for Jonathan instead, uh, trying to just cycle Pokemon around. Uh, Wolf will go ahead and finally Mega Evolve his Rayquaza. That wasn't even a Mega Evolve uh, extreme speed that knocked out the Kyogre there. Right. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Rayquaza now in its Mega Evolution will be much more powerful and already has that Swords Dance. Fake Out does connect on Groudon, so Groudon is going to flinch. Dragon Ascent from Rayquaza is going to connect. Is it going to be on that Groudon or on that Bronzong on the switch in? Looks oh. like it will be on the Bronzong. So Groudon will stick around, but Bronzong goes down, and I believe that should be the end of Trick Room here with Gengar coming back out on the field. Yeah, oh, this is so, so close, but I think with timer running low, you know, Wolf definitely sees a uh, opening here in mm -hmm. terms of the advantage because uh, it, it's close. I feel like, you know, Wolf still is in a really good position because he's got that Kyogre in the back, and uh, ultimately, you know, I really have no idea whether it, that extreme speed, you know, how that calculation works, but mm -hmm. you'd imagine that it might have been a damage roll there, and let if Kyogre hangs on, you get the Ice Beam off against Rekwaza. Yeah. So that's so, so big here, and we are coming down to the last couple of turns of this game. Of course, like you mentioned, Trick Room is over, but that Rekwaza still is at plus two attack, and that's mm -hmm. really scary. Gengar, of course, does get access to Will-O-Wisp, which could, which could potentially help out, but uh, right now, if you're Groudon, you have to make the decision, what attack do I go for here? Do I have enough time, really, even, because the battle time is running low? Yeah, there's not much time left. Looks like we may have one, maybe two more turns after this. Oh my gosh, this is so and Wolf close. has the Pokemon advantage. Jonathan needs to make something happen here. Groudon protects, though, so Jonathan's not going to go on the offensive at all. Groudon protecting itself. Hit him on top of oh. the wide guard. So wide guard on Hitmontop. Good thing that Groudon protected because it wasn't going to be able to do much of anything else. Will-O-Wisp connecting to Rayquaza. Would have liked to have that much earlier on, uh, but I just don't... Dragon Ascent will Into connect the with the Gengar! Wolf picks up the Dragon Ascent onto Gengar, and I don't think there is any way that Jonathan can pull this one off. 
with only one minute, 10 seconds left on the timer. Well, that was actually an incredible, incredible game there. I mean, yeah, timer is running low, but Kyogre in the back and Hitmon top and Rayquaza. Mm -hmm. uh, Wolf will be able to take this first game, but really, really well played there. And I like the gamble that Jonathan was at least trying to go for, right? Because yeah. it's like, if you hope Rayquaza targets the Groudon site, you get the burn off, then the next turn, you might actually be able to pick up a potential double knockout there. Mm -hmm. uh, even if Rayquaza protects, you know, there's enough time maybe for one more turn. So uh, looking at it actually looked like, you know, Wolf had enough firepower there in the end. But that was a really, really good game. And wow, I, <laughs> you know, Wolf looks like he's going to be able to just scratch the surface and uh, win this first game. But, you know, Jonathan proving this is not going to be easy if you want the title. You really have to earn it. Yeah, and I really do think it all came down to that extreme speed onto Kyogre, being able to yeah. knock that Pokemon out in Trick Room. Rayquaza just took its first bit of damage here at the second to last turn of the game. Uh, Jonathan just can't ignore that Rayquaza moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to see Kyogre come back in here, and uh, Hitmontop probably is just going to go for the wide guard there to make sure Groudon can't hit both Pokemon at once, uh, since at this point the, the game will be over uh, at this turn. Yep, here comes the wide guard from Hitmontop, and uh, even if Groudon were able to knock out one of these Pokemon, not enough because time has ended, and Wolf Glick will take game one over Jonathan Evans, and Wolf is only one short game away from becoming the new world champion. Wolfie Glick is one game away from becoming your world champion. Jonathan Evans needs to win the next two in order to get that title. All right, and we are going to see the exact same leads as before. Wolf with Rayquaza and Kyogre up against Jonathan's Gengar and Kyogre. And uh, really interesting that they both kept these leads. I mean, uh, like I mentioned, I think both players felt comfortable with how they played, but uh, this lead matchup still felt weird. Yeah, it did. And there's so much going on already because we saw the Thunder come up from Jonathan's Kyogre uh, in the beginning, right? And so Thunder is a big, big deal because it does so much damage to that Kyogre. So there's some mind games right now. Do you expect Wolf to once again switch into a Raichu? And if so, which slot, right? You'd imagine if Rayquaza actually switch out into Raichu, then the Thunder just gets redirected and Kyogre is just able to get a free water type attack off. Yeah. Gengar here, you know, is faster, but Kyogre on Jonathan's end is slower. That means that uh, there is a potential for Wolf to just get a big water spout off, just like the last game. Yeah, also knowing that Gengar does survive that water spout after a, a sludge bomb, though, could be very important information for Jonathan to have here. Right. Uh, may still feel comfortable targeting down the Kyogre and maybe even just going for uh, like an Ice Beam on that Rayquaza instead of the Thunder onto the Kyogre. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, there's just, there's so much because if if Wolf maybe just decides, okay, I'm just going to stay in with Rayquaza, I don't think that he's going to uh, go for an Ice Beam because he might predict the right tree switch and go for a Water type attack, then Rayquaza could maybe get a Sword Sands off. Obviously a little bit risky. Let's see if Wolf switches out. He does go for the switch out. Yeah, Wolf is going to switch out the Rayquaza once again, and it will be the right tree for the second game in a row. Did Jonathan fall for the same trap here? His Pokemon are sticking around, so Gengar and Kyogre still on the field for Jonathan. Mega Evolution Sludge Bomb will connect with the Kyogre. So far, it is a repeat from game one, but oh, the there poison. is a poison. That could be a big deal in this matchup. Yeah, that small little bit of extra chip damage. Origin Pulse from Wolf not going for the Water Spout now that he knows that he might get attacked here. Oh! Does pick up the KO onto Gengar. So Gengar will go down to the Origin Pulse. Origin Pulse coming back out from Jonathan's own Kyogre will deal a good amount of damage to the Raichu, but I'm pretty sure we've seen it survive that. Yep, seen that survive that before. Kyogre taking the chip damage from the poison as well, though. Yeah, very heavy trade off there in terms of damage. Uh, this time, Mega Gengar does go down, but if I'm Jonathan, I'm probably feeling okay about that, right? However, the one thing you do have to be really scared of is the Endeavor, endeavor from Raichu. Even though that damage is nice, Raichu is such a fast Pokemon, and you can just Endeavor and combo it with the Kyogre attack. Now, if Jonathan's Kyogre was faster, then you maybe feel pretty good about your position because an Origin Pulse could potentially pick up a double knockout, but mm -hmm. this is still really, really scary for Jonathan because, you know, we've seen the Bronzong, we've seen the Groudon, yeah. and he's probably going to want to bring one of those two. I'm guessing that Jonathan isn't going to change too much in terms of uh, the Pokemon that he's been using here. Yeah, but uh, that Endeavor is so... So, so frightening. Just coming out from that Raichu, being able to take out either the Kyogre, even the Bronzong may not be able to get set up if it can get Endeavored plus Origin Pulse. And here's the Groudon. This is really, really scary because Raichu has the ability to Endeavor either Pokemon. Now, the one good thing at least is that if you Endeavor the Kyogre, I don't think Wolf's Kyogre will be able to do too much to Jonathan's Kyogre because the sun will be up. 
So there's the Endeavor play possible, but of course Wolf's shown that he loves switching out. He's been switching out so often in this game. Wouldn't be surprised to see Raichu switch out into maybe a hit on top or the Rayquaza. Mm -hmm. Really feels like Wolf's gonna go with the same four Pokemon in this matchup. He feels like those are the best four Pokemon equipped to deal with it. So we'll see how Jonathan can respond here because if he can avoid an Endeavor and you know basically pick up a knockout before any of his primals take too much damage, mm -hmm. he can put himself into a much better position. Yeah, really gonna be interesting here. Of course the sun is up now, but we do know that Rayquaza is in the back and can eliminate the sun. These weather wars with these restricted Pokemon have never been higher stakes. Absolutely <laughs> none. This is an incredible world finals. I've been really impressed by the play from both sides. And it's a shame that only one of these players will be able to call themselves war champion at the end of the set. But let's see how this next turn plays out. This is going to be a big one, depending on what Raichu does, whether it attacks or switches out. All right. Well, Kyogre is going to switch out. So Kyogre will switch out. Raichu not going to be able to deal, da uh, deal much, uh, get any KOs here. Maybe able to endeavor something down. Hitmon top will intimidate the Groudon and the Kyogre. Uh, more importantly, getting the Intimidate off onto that Groudon. But Jonathan's going to switch his Groudon out as well. Is this Raichu going to go for a, a an Endeavor, a Fake Out? Is it just going to uh, go for a Volt Switch? Bronzong out. Endeavor, Endeavor who from is the Raichu. Target? Target's the Kyogre. Kyogre takes a lot of damage, but the Origin Pulse will connect. No more uh, sun will mean that the Origin Pulse will pick up a KO onto Raichu and about 50% health onto that Hitmon top. Yeah, and at first I was like, oh man, it's targeted on the Kyogre. That's such a good target down. But the fact now is that Bronzong is still at full HP. Mm -hmm. And Bronzong, of course, does have the Gyro Ball damage against the Rayquaza, but it also has the ability to set up Trick Room, which And Hitmon game. top was forced out. Exactly. So uh, I think if I'm Jonathan, I'm feeling okay about that. You know, the Origin Pulse just going for all the free damage and getting it off there, getting the knockout. Hitmon top took a lot of damage. There as well. mm -hmm. All right, well, Wolf will send out the Rayquaza and does have one other Pokemon to send out now. Uh, of course, Rayquaza taking over for the Hitmon top that got ejected. Uh, so could just still bring back the Hitmon top here to take out the, the fainted Raichu and threaten that fake out pressure onto the Bronzong. But of course, potentially leaving the Rayquaza vulnerable, though we already know that with that Endeavor, Extreme Speed should be able to pick this up without right. the Sword Stance. And that's why the priority is so good. You know, you would think, oh, Jonathan, if he just sets up Trick Room, he's in such a prime position to win this one, but that's not necessarily the case. The Sword Stance makes Extreme Speed such a powerful attack, and it just does so much damage. We saw that it was able to just pick up the Knockout on Kyogre in regular Rayquaza form in that yeah. last game. So, so much strength coming out from there, and uh, the scary thing here is I think Jonathan's going to want to set up Trick Room, but does he have enough firepower, right? Because Groudon and Bronzong can't really hit Rayquaza for too hard. All right, well, Kyogre is going to be the switch in for Wolf. Just wants to have all of that offensive pressure just in case uh, Bronzong, just in case he needs to be able to knock out that Bronzong here before it can set up a trick room. Kyogre, of course, is poisoned. Both players at three Pokemon. Uh, very likely that Jonathan's going to want to preserve this Kyogre, try to get it into a better position. Uh, but not a safe switch in because of that Rayquaza on the field. Yeah, I guess what's really tricky here for Jonathan is that, uh, you know, uh, the Kyogre is so heavily damaged, and Kyogre is the main Pokemon that you want to use on this team to damage Rayquaza with its super effective Ice Beam. Bronzong and Groudon have Gyro Ball and Fire type attacks, but that's practically it. And we haven't seen a Gravity come out from this Bronzong either, so that makes mm -hmm. things really difficult. Rayquaza is just such an imminent threat. It was the reason why, you know, there's just always a pressure constantly around it. Well, Wolf is going to retreat the Kyogre for the Hitmon top. Uh, gets the Intimidate off onto Bronzong and Kyogre, and will have Fake Out pressure for the next turn. Intimidate onto both those Pokemon. Rayquaza just going for the offense, a Dragon Ascent, no Protects coming out from Jonathan's Pokemon onto the Kyogre, so will be able to knock out Kyogre with that Dragon Ascent, drop some of its defenses as well, uh, and Kyogre will go down. Bronzong likely going for a Trick Room here. I think if there's no Trick Room, there's no way for Jonathan to bring this back does go for the Trick Room, and now Bronzong versus Groudon are going to have to be able to beat Hitmontop, Rayquaza, and Kyogre. Oh man, so Wolf opting not to go for a Sword Stance, nor did he Mega Evolve the Rayquaza there, and that's such a small nuanced play that actually makes such a big difference in matchups like this. By not Mega Evolving Rayquaza, first of all, you know, you're a little bit slower, so that could help potentially in the Trick Room. Doesn't matter too much in this matchup, but the main point is that you still conserve your Airlock and the ability to Mega Evolve at any point bringing yeah. the Delta Stream up. And this is so intense. Once again, it feels like Wolf just has a slight advantage, but one, like that yep, last game... But Trick Room could be the biggest part of this. You it know, could. Having, having the Groudon and the Bronzong, that Kyogre is so weak and it's poison. Hitmontop is very low. Uh, Rayquaza still at full health, but 
Bronzong and Groudon may be able to just deal with its partners before Rayquaza can deal too much back to them. Right, and we know that that Rayquaza is already at minus one defense and special defense from that Dragon Ascent. So Groudon is going to come back in. You know, Bronzong and Groudon, two really good Pokemon to have in the late game of any match here. But the issue here is that Jonathan, uh, of course, cannot uh, kind of bring Groudon back in. And now, of course, there is a skill swap potential as well. So mm -hmm. if I'm Jonathan, you know, I'm definitely not counting myself out here. And one of the nice things is because Rayquaza didn't go for anything like a sword stance, uh, it's still, you know, just sitting at neutral attack, which is why I like the play that Jonathan made there. He says, okay, if your Rayquaza sword stances, I'm going to get an Ice Beam off and I'm going to do so much damage. Mm -hmm. If you get the attack off, then I get the free switch into my Groudon and I'm still in a pretty good position because you can't do too much damage. But of course, we did see him on top switch in last turn, so there is that fake out pressure. Oh man, it's all coming down to these last two Pokemon for Jonathan. Jonathan, Evan need, John, Jonathan Evans needs these two Pokemon, this Bronzong and this Groudon, to come up huge in this match, or else he will go home as only the runner-up and Wolf will be your new world champion. Rayquaza does Oh, this could be the turn! If it gets the damage off, it may be what makes Wolf the, the world champion. Rayquaza's Delta Stream now out on the field. Groudon protects. Oh, Wolf. Oh, what did Wolf do? Did Wolf attack that Groudon? Him on top goes for the fake out onto the Bronzong. So Bronzong's not going to be able to move. Groudon's not going to take any damage here, uh, but nothing else. Oh, he calls dance. it! Oh, he went for the Swords Dance. Can't play passive against Wolf or he will just set up in your face. Oh my god! And now that Rayquaza is back to being the monster threat. That might have just won Wolf Lake the World Championship. Jonathan there had the potential to go for an eruption. Mm -hmm. You get that eruption off, you knock out him on top. Rayquaza takes a good amount of damage because of its reduced defenses. Kyogre comes back in. Gyro Ball would even be dealing a lot of damage. Exactly, and then you could skill swap there. So Wolf going all in on that raid. He knows Ooh. I'm already up one game. I can risk this. I'm going to go for it, and he gets it. He doesn't lose anything from that turn. And oh my gosh, this is going to be an uphill battle. Jonathan Evans wants to win this one. With that Sword Dance, it's likely like Groudon could even go down to a Dragon Ascent right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wolf really punishing that passive play on Jonathan's part. Hit on top, will switch out for Kyogre. Kyogre going to make sure that no fire type abilities can be used, so that protects Rayquaza entirely from the Groudon. Oh, here Primordial we go. Seal on, see on the field. Gyro Ball from Bronzong connects with the Rayquaza. Will be dealing damage, but not enough. Precipice Blades doesn't hit the Rayquaza. Oh, oh Kyogre avoids oh, the Precipice Blades! Dragon Ascent from Rayquaza. After its friend, Kyogre avoids the Precipice Blades. The Dragon Ascent coming out from the galaxy. Does from it knock it out? Oh, oh no! Groudon sticks around with 13 hit points, surviving that cosmic assault. Rayquaza taking a little bit more of its defenses drop. Kyogre taking a little bit more damage from the poison. But Groudon now well within extreme speed range, maybe even fake out range from that hop on top in the back. This was so close, and I think that, I don't, you know, Jonathan probably going for the Protector with Groudon because he feared the Fake Out and the Dragon Ascent target, but I think it would have made more sense for Groudon maybe to just go for an attack because you know you're the Dragon Ascent won't do that much damage at that point. So that was the game-defining play there. Wolf was able to get that free Swords Dance off, and that's why this team is always such a threat. Wolf must be able to taste the World Championship right now. He's so close. It's not over yet, though. It's not over for Jonathan, but it is so, so, so close. Oh, here's the Kyogre switch out. That's going to be able to get in another Intimidate Another off. Intimidate that Gyro Ball is not going to be dealing enough damage from Bronzong without a critical hit. And Groudon here has to protect itself if Jonathan's going to have any hope of taking this back. Groudon goes for the Protect. Rayquaza will go for an attack here. Extreme Speed into the Protect. Here comes the Gyro Ball Can we from crit? Bronzong. Needs this crit. Connect with the Rayquaza. Deals a lot of damage. Oh, not no, that's not One enough. more. And at this point, you know, first of all, once again, time is running so low. But second of all, Hitmontop gets access to Fake Out. It also gets access to Feint, so you could Feint here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this could maybe actually come down to timers, still because, you know, if Rayquaza, Hitmontop, and Kyogre are all heavily damaged, mm -hmm. uh, you could Fake Out Bronzong here and go for, I guess, an Extreme Speed onto Groudon. Um, if you protect the Groudon there, if you know, block. If you have Feint, you have to use it. <laughs> that would be good to see here. You know, Fake out onto Bronzong. Bronzong is the main means of offense right now. Oh, we're getting so close to it. These games have been so close. Wolf's just made one better play both times, and that's really what's been keeping him in this one. Jonathan being so close. Here's the protect. Uh, oh, he went fails. for the double protects. Not enough. Hitmontop just goes for the Fake out onto Bronzong. 
And with that double protect fail, Extreme Speed will connect, pick up the Groudon, and Bronzong is not going to be enough against this Hitmontop and not going to be enough against this Mega Rayquaza. Bronzong flinches, can't do anything, and Trick Room ends. Additionally, three Pokemon left for Wolf, only the Bronzong left for Jonathan. Wolfie Glick must be able to taste that War Champion. It is he's so good. He is for. a minute and 37 seconds away. Yeah, and it may end even before that. All he's got to do is just attack with all of his Pokemon right now. Bronzong has no way to protect itself. Dragon coming from that plus two Rayquaza. Going to target down that Bronzong. Bronzong cannot knock out enough Pokemon right now. This was actually <laughs> one of the pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> this was one of the best Master Division finals I've ever seen. And Hitmontop with the close combat onto Bronzong. Also not enough. Jonathan just hanging in there by a sliver of health. Bronzong's Gyro Ball will finally be able to pick up the knockout onto the Mega Rayquaza. But with Hitmontop and Kyogre and no Trick Room, that is going to be it for Jonathan. It is, but you know, it wasn't a 0-2. But these are close. But this easily could have been a 2-0. I am so impressed by Jonathan's level of play here. There was, seems like there was just maybe one prediction like he wasn't able to get. It wasn't even maybe slightly, like, misplay isn't a way to, a good way to call it. It's more of just a prediction that Wolfie was able to nail. This yeah, game was won by is. Wolf. And here's the water spout. Wolfie Glick is your 2016 Pokemon video game world champion in the Masters Division.